Good evening. It's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. And we begin tonight with the coronavirus emergency and the new numbers just in tonight with Thanksgiving just two days away. An alarming surge in new cases and millions of Americans on the move for the holiday and what Dr. Fauci said today about what that could bring. The intense outbreak seen across the nation in red there on the map. Authorities this evening now reporting 170,000 new cases in just the past 24 hours. More than 259,000 lives lost now, more than 1,800 more lives in just the last day. Tonight, we mark 14 straight days of record hospitalizations, more than 85,000 patients in hospitals across this country. Air Force nurses arriving in Hart hit Bismarck, North Dakota, the National Guard helping elsewhere tonight. A field hospital reopening on Staten Island here in New York, taking in its first patients and millions waiting for hours for tests, some waiting five hours or more today. Authorities warning against a false sense of security from those tests. And we learned today that four million passengers have already taken to the air to travel for the holiday and that tomorrow is now expected to be the busiest day yet. ABC's Tom Yamas leads us off right here in New York tonight. Tonight, an all out battle against a surging virus. Teams of Air Force nurses deployed to overwhelmed hospitals in North Dakota. In El Paso, the National Guard helping out in morgues running out of space. And in New York City, the original epicenter of this pandemic, the first patient transferred into this reopened field hospital on Staten Island where cases have tripled. So your field hospital's up and running and the first patient with COVID has just gone in? Yes, we're actually in the process. They're on their way. Our first patient is on their way right now. Um, and we'll be, we'll be taking uh, well over a dozen patients today. And tonight, with millions on the move, Thanksgiving threatening a nation already facing a dire prognosis. If, in fact, you're in a situation when you do the things that are increasing the risk, the travel, the congregate setting, not wearing masks, the chances are that you will see a surge superimposed upon a surge. For the last 14 days, a record number of Americans hospitalized. And this week, a death reported every minute in this country. And despite the CDC warning to avoid travel and gatherings, testing lines from California to Florida to North Carolina only growing as Americans hit the roads and pack airports. This is the first time that I've traveled during COVID, so I was a little anxious in front of us. The guy coughed in front of us and we was like, oh my God. And still every day, teams on the front lines witnessing unthinkable loss. You have someone that is dying, actively dying, and you have to set up a FaceTime um, to hopefully get people involved in the dying process. There are nurses every day that cry because of this. Today, we met 57-year-old Carl Worden, a contractor from South Carolina. He survived COVID, but it ravaged his lungs. That's one of his lungs there on the left. You can see how deformed it appears next to a healthy lung. They uh, actually had to crack my rib cage open. Doctors at Brigham and Women's Hospital were able to save his life with a double lung transplant. Carl, you were one of the lucky ones. You, you got a second chance. What do you think every time you take a breath now? I, I'm thankful every day. Every day I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my family. They were always there with me. But, yeah, people need to pay attention. It's not a joke. The message from that patient in that bed tonight and Tom Yamas now outside that field hospital on Staten Island. And, Tom, we are learning the CDC is considering shortening the recommended a quarantine for people who've been exposed to someone with the virus. We know that stands at 14 days now. Any indication as to what they're going to change that to? David, that's absolutely right. These comments were just made by the testing czar, Admiral Jawar. Basically what they're looking at, and they're still investigating this, is changing the potential quarantine time from 14 days, as you just mentioned, to 10 days accompanied by a negative test. That negative test is key. But again, the guidelines haven't changed. This is something they're actively studying and investigating right now, David. All right, Tom Yamas leading us off tonight. Tom, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.